The one yep. thing I find interesting, you set so much up in episode seven. Uh, we were waiting for what's gonna happen with the saber being passed to Luke, right. and then Ryan obviously threw it over his yeah, shoulder, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then the Ray's parents thing. Mm -hmm. um, out of all everything that happened in eight, mm -hmm. what was the most surprising twist for you as the person who made seven? Which one threw, like, kind of threw you for a loop? Well, you know, there were there were things, you know, obviously. Uh, I'd read the script. It wasn't like I, I just went to go see yeah. Last Jedi, but I, I, I saw what Ryan was doing. What I, what I loved about his approach was that he was just subverting all expectations yeah. everywhere you looked. And I think that the, you know, the, maybe the biggest surprise was not the biggest, you know, you think Luke dying maybe was the biggest surprise or, you know, um, you know uh, I guess I, spoiler alert, but Ren killing Snoke. There were certain things that yeah. felt like they were, you know, weirdly for me, the thing that like, was the most surprising was Phasma dying. Interesting. Because I, 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 that was one of those characters that I, I thought that there was actually something else, you know. But look, it, it would have been, you know, it, no one wants a character to die, mm. and yet, you know, I, I know that when you know we had uh, Kylo Ren, you know, kill Han Solo, that was done because it was, you know, Harrison always knew that there needed to be utility for the character, yeah. and he had famously always wanted Han to die and serve that purpose. But it felt like this was a way to begin to define Kylo Ren. Uh, not just a way to kill a character. Mm. So I could see why Ryan chose to do that with some of these characters. But I guess for me, the biggest surprise, weirdly, was was Phasma yeah. the way she did. When you are pulling from seven and eight for Carrie Fisher's footage and not using a CGI version mm -hmm. of her character in the movie, which thank you for doing that, I was curious how much of the writing of Skywalker had to be around what you had available from Carrie. Did it, did it change any of the storytelling for you? Well, we hadn't written a script before, so it, we started from scratch and we, we started telling the story knowing that we had to use Leia in the story knowing we weren't gonna use digital, knowing we weren't gonna recast it, obviously, and we went back to look at footage that we had from seven. There was nothing that we used from eight, but we, we looked at The Force Awakens footage, and, and we had opportunities with certain scenes to use shots that Carrie was in. We wrote the entire scene around Carrie. We shot the entire scene around Carrie. So we, we relit, when we shot the new scenes, we lit the set, we, you know, I choreographed the shots, composed the shots to the old footage. So it, what's what's weird is, on this movie as on most, you know, there are days when because of scheduling, sometimes an actor is not available to be in a scene. So you'll sometimes shoot the other side of the scene, and that's kind of what it was like in all these scenes with Carrie. We had shot her footage just years ago, mm. and we integrated them into uh, in, into these you know the new sets. But we were we were using that footage. The actors would look at the footage, and then we would do their side of the scene. And what's really remarkable is, you know, there are some really sweet, intimate, personal moments that these actors, they were with Carrie in those scenes, mm. even though Carrie's Carrie shot was was done four years earlier. I'm a huge Kevin Smith fan. I grew up on his movies, and when they He's released awesome. the Legacy trailer the other day, mm -hmm. and they had the scene from Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back in yeah. it when he plays Blunt sure. Man, yeah, yeah. it just made me, it geeked me out because that, he's been such a big fan of the Star mm -hmm. Wars movies. I'm just curious uh, what your relationship like is like with Kevin, and when he came to visit the set mm -hmm. for the five days he was there, mm -hmm. he came up to you and he was about to go look at the last shot of the movie and you apparently told him not to look at it uh, from what the story he tells. He says that they, basically someone in the production crew yeah, said yeah. there's like, the, if you go up to the bleachers and look down, you'll see the final shot of the movie. Mm. And apparently you dissuaded him. Is that uh, right? Well, it, it, I will, in fairness, when Kevin was there and uh, he may or may not um, appear in the film. Uh, Please say I, he's in the movie. I, I'm not gonna say He was say a trooper it. in Seven though. I'm, I'm just gonna say he may or may not up here in the film. But I will say that Kevin, who is a friend, um, when he was there, I, I know that I was in the middle of what was, as it was for the entire shoot, uh, a bit of just mad distraction. Like there were eight million things going on. So this very well may have happened exactly as you described. <laughs> you um, I do know that there was a thing he could have gone to look at that, that wasn't necessarily the final shot, but it was the end of the movie that uh, I could see why. But as we're talking, I'm thinking, oh man, he should have gone. He should have gone to look at it because it, you know, it, it wouldn't have broken him. Look at that guy. By the way, could he be in better shape right now? He is, I love The him. guy is a, now he's a specimen. Yeah. Are you a fan of his movies? Have you seen like of reboot and all? Have you seen oh, the yeah, new one? No, I've not seen the new one. The new but one's so I good. I haven't seen anything, but I will say yeah. this. He's a specimen. Yeah. I've ne now I find myself simply in awe of his physique. Me too. 
My wife is always like, his skin looks amazing. Well, I don't go that far. Yeah, my, that's my wife. My wife does that. Well, you should question things. <laughs> <laughs> JJ, this is an absolute my honor. Friend. First of all, congratulations to you. We've discussed uh, these films for a few years now, mm -hmm. and I was curious if, looking back mm -hmm. at Episode Seven, The Force Awakens, mm -hmm. do you remember the first day you stepped on set and the first time you heard JJ yell action for a scene you were in? I think so. I think it was, and it's actually in the film, where I'm scrubbing a part. Oh, wow. I believe it was that one. And I was like, okay, this is, I can, I can do this. Even though I'm not kidding, we did that about 20 times. <laughs> um, and I guess that was also the moment I realized it's so, uh, this one is a lot looser, but there's still such a specificity to what JJ wants. Yeah. And what the vision of the thing is. I remember thinking, oh yeah, I'm just cleaning a thing and then I look up, but it had to be um, a real true moment of, oh, look at this parent with their child, you know, mm. and all that other stuff. So I remember thinking, oh, there are no small scenes in this. Mm. And then it was scary again. Well, you know, what's interesting about this movie, and I will say this, and I love that JJ is not doing CGI with mm. Carrie Fisher. Mm -hmm. I think that's such a smart decision. Mm -hmm. And he's gonna pull from unused footage mm -hmm. from seven and eight. I was curious if from an acting standpoint, without context, we don't think you any story points, how those scenes worked as an actor in the sense of how were you able, like did they, did you, did you have, was there a mark there where Carrie it, would be standing? It's essentially what um, I think, because we're such a practical effects film, yeah. I think it, it sort of feels like what it might be if you're more of a CGI film, huh. because you're not, you're just acting with you trying to sort of imagine it. Hmm. Um, but it's also that strange thing of, I, I knew what they were matching to in the scene. Mm. Um, so it it weirdly should have felt so strange, but it was actually deeply emotional yeah. and obviously quite upsetting because- She's not there. Um, yeah, and immediately mm. you're getting a sense of what the scene is gonna be, but one person isn't there. So mm. it's strange, but also watching it, which we did last night, it's so weird because it really feels like we're there together. I wanted to ask you about how that was to watch those scenes. Like, was, like, were, like, did it play how you imagined it while you shot it, or did it play even better? Uh, no, it played, it did play how I imagined it, yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's very, it's a really lovely, because I think, and JJ might disagree, but Ray was looking for a parent figure, yeah. um, and Luke just wasn't that for mm. her. And that's what I always found so upsetting about The Last Jedi, and why I felt like it was so emotional doing it, because like all she wants is a family. So um, the the layer thing, it, even to have to have that sense of someone older and wiser who is mm. helping you, it's such a comforting feeling. Yeah. I think watching it, you do get that sense. You play a character over three films, mm. uh, and Ray is such a great character. She's mm. so layered. There's such an emotional element to it. The comedy, everything about that character is mm. so brilliant. As we sit here right now, you're wrapped, mm. you're done with Star Wars. Mm. How has Ray changed you as a person? And what aspects of Ray have you kind of brought into your own life? Just maybe little things, personality elements, does, does it stay with you like that? And how have you changed? I would say my sister said a lot of it is just, is me. I think there's that mm. strange thing of JJ was really, JJ sort of created the characters the first time around for us. Yeah. So I think it is that strange mirroring thing. I'm definitely quite earnest. Mm. Um, and there's nice sort of like combative relationships in this in a like fun, lovely way between friends. So that's fun too, that like, um, but I think it's, she's more me, which is the blessing of working mm. someone that knows you because they're sort of writing for you. But I have not done anything remotely heroic. So that is her. Wow, that's awesome. Well, thank you for talking to me. Thank, thank you, you for all these interviews over the years. Thank and you. For you specifically, going back to episode four to now, mm -hmm. how much has 3PO's suit changed in regards to the filmmaking of it? Like, what, did it, what was it like on four? It, What's it like now? It's changed hugely. Uh, they spent six months back in 1976 making it, and it was about 18 pieces of, of fiberglass and, and metal and so on. And we never had time to really work it out, work which bits fitted, so it didn't work. Huh. And then gradually over the movies, um, bits changed, they got adapted. Particularly the hands, finally in this movie, The Rise of Skywalker, I get hands that are like my hands. This is the first time? The first time ever. So when you see the movie and I grasp a certain object, just know that I was taking huge <laughs> pride in doing that. Such is the art of acting. That's awesome. And for you, I mean, you've worn the suit from seven to now. Mm. Um, how much has Chewbacca's suit changed for you? And do you actually do the noises 
inside the mask or do you ADR those later? I do the noise uh, inside the mask, and, but, but usually they use the bear sounds that they right. hear. Right. That's Chewbacca's original sound. Oh, you give them the sounds on set for the actor yes, and then they add it in. Yes, for timing and... Yeah. and for, it makes such a difference. If you, yeah. you know, R2-D2 used to be totally silent, BB-8 makes noises, Jonas makes noises, yes. and it gives the other actor something to. It's, it makes it. It ma gives uh, it gives the other actor something to react react to. Hmm. Uh, whether it's, if it would just be, hey, should we jump to light speed or what? <laughs> you know, it would be very different. Right. Um, but uh, but the suit has changed. Every movie they make a new new mask for me. And does it get, it, does it get better each time in regards to comfort? I don't know. Or? Yeah, and I don't even remember the reason why they make a new mask. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's might be some some issues with. With uh, with wear and tear or yeah. something because those masks they get a lot of uh, use and uh, but uh, I, I wouldn't know but it's it's definitely very advanced. Now you're the only actor to ever appear in all nine movies, which Crazy, is like isn't it? probably the coolest fact to have as an actor. And I was curious how much three PO has changed you as a person. You play this character from for over forty years. How much has he become you at all? Like, do, has, he hasn't. Be, I don't think he's become me. He's become a very, very close companion, and he has become a kind of conduit, a, a ticket to to meet so many people. And and the older I get, and the more we get into these uh, high rise numbers on the film, episode nine, I'm finally really getting to understand how the fans, how the audiences have seen this movie is different from the way we see them. We're mm. backstage, which is great, but now finally, I'm beginning to recognize the energy and the joy that the fans see in our films and hugely grateful for that. Now with Nine being the quote unquote end of the saga, um, I was just curious without, without any story context or being vague, what was it like to say goodbye to him in the sense of at, when you finished Nine, did you have a moment with the suit at all? Or no, it... absolutely not. What, what, was, what was moving and, and, and a little <clears throat> tear making on the set was the last day I was physically there uh, as myself and saying goodbye to JJ. You know, we're all still around, but there was this loving crew, mm. all kind of a little round of applause for Anthony who's leaving and that was... I was there, it was uh, wait, very Were you there? I was there, yeah. I yeah. remember. Oh, it was it was, was a bit. There on your last it was day. difficult, but three PO. No, he's he's going to be doing other stuff. Not major films, but um, he's too good a person to leave forever. Did you come up with a voice yourself for him? Yeah, and I'm going <clears> to <throat> a little froggy today. Um, yet, out of uh, six months reading the script, suddenly on day one, with all the stuff happening around and the fear and the and the uh, the strangeness of it all, three PO arrived. <laughs> if I start crying, is everyone going to make fun of me here? That was amazing. Hey, just seeing yeah. you do that in person, oh my God, it was Blue. amazing. Sorry. It's crazy, isn't yeah. it? Sorry. Oh. All right, I know you've already talked about the script story a zillion times. It's an, ama it's an amazing story, but I do have a genuine question about it. Mm. When I first started reading about Star Wars and J.J., yeah. I was always told that J.J. was very secure about the scripts and like honestly, like he wouldn't let people leave with them. Yeah. How did it get to your house? Like, was that... Are you allowed to take I, a I think it's the, the practicality of having to learn lines for a movie that's over two hours and not being able to take it home was absolutely dumb. So I think <laughs> Lucasfilm realised that, you, you know what, maybe the actors would be better actors if they had a script. <laughs> <laughs> that seems reasonable. It seems yeah. reasonable to take the script home. Um, but I was moving, I was moving right. uh, apartments and while like getting to the last leg of of shooting something, so I was, you know, there were all sorts of layers and and, and detail to this that the masses don't know. But what's it, crazy is I'm wondering, know. like, were there copies made? That's what I was like. I mean, how do we even? It's in, it's a crazy I story. Think if, there, if there were copies made, we we would have found there. out. Yeah, we would have yeah. found out by now. But they they managed to get at it pretty pretty soon. You know, thankfully it was lost in a more more secure environment where. Oh, a cleaner came in at this time. Now I've got everyone saying, you know, well, why didn't you take your furniture as well? I'm like, <laughs> now I've got to explain my lease deal to you. <laughs> like, what the hell? Let's go through your mortgage. Yeah, let's, yeah. Go, let's go <laughs> through. Let's go <laughs> credit card. I'm like, look, 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 script back, damn it, it's back. <laughs> <laughs> did you? What, what happened after that all went down? Did you get like talked to? Like, did like did JJ? Like, I mean, like we're adults, but I mean, I feel like yeah. did, what was that conversation like with JJ when he found out? No, no, JJ, JJ was actually cool, cool about it. It was just like, as long as we got it back, that's the that's yeah. the priority. Then it was like, oh, what happened? Then when they found out details, they're like, mm. because actually, while I was working on Star Wars, my accommodation was I was in, in stable anyway because I was moving from place to place. So everyone kind of figured that I was like, you know, stressed out with the move while you know filming. So right. I feel like there was a nice bit of empathy. I didn't even get an official call. 
Well, JJ's right downstairs, so. No, no, not from Jay. Oh. You don't need to be scared of Jay. You guys say <laughs> Jay, Jay? He's too nice. He's like, the ni he's like Mr. Rogers. He's like the nicest guy of all time. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, I want to ask you Finn is such a great character. I've been interviewing you for these movies for a few years now, mm. and I wanted to know the first time you were ever on set as Finn and heard JJ yell action. What scene was that? And also, how has Finn changed your life in the sense of like, what aspects of him are now with you after you say goodbye to him? Um, to the first scene question. Oh uh, yeah, I've, 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 uh, working, walking in the desert, that was the first thing in Abu Dhabi, just walking in the desert, wow. um, just the walk, there was no dialogue, just walking, you know, Finn's lost, he's just landed, doesn't know where to go, in Jakku, it's just a walk, that's all it was. Wow. And for Daisy, it was just scrubbing. Just yeah, keen. that's what she said. I, that I was, was there for that, behind the camera, just looking at her. Um, so yeah, it was just silent stuff, and I think that was a way to get us comfortable into it, feel out the characters a bit more. Mm. So yeah, what was your second one again? How did Finn change you? I mean, like you, you think about someone you play for three massive films. Do you know what's funny about that? I think I change Finn. Can you elaborate on that? That's As awesome. in the, 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 the character can't really change me because I create him. I, I, yeah. I literally think him up. I just feel like whatever changes happen with me, then I add to the character. So the character is, is, is more of the expression and, and gets more of the influence than me being influenced mm. by the character. What's an aspect of John on screen that I'd see? I think he's just, like something I noticed after watching it yesterday was just that, oh, he's, he's much more, he's grown up. And I'm like, oh yeah, we signed onto the films when we were like, what, 23, you know? And, and now I'm 27, I'm like, oh, there's been a transition of growth. And JJ was saying it too, he was like, we watch it in the editing room, we're like, in Force Awakens, you lot were babies. You know, and now watching you in Nine, we see how you lot have grown. And the confidence we get in real life, it actually influences the characters cool. rather than the characters, you know, influencing influencing us. You know, Carrie, I love Felicity. I love that show so much. Oh, and thanks. JJ obviously created the show. Yep. I was curious the JJ you worked with then and the JJ you worked with now, what you saw in JJ back when you did Felicity that is still with him now in, in regards to how has he changed and evolved as a filmmaker from that moment? He's exactly the same. Really? In fact, when I tested for Felicity, I am a nerv really nervous person, especially in high stress or in social situations. And I had auditioned for them and then I had to go in again for the, whatever, the big wigs or whatever. <laughs> and I bombed, bombed. So much so that JJ pulled me inside this room and there was some ridiculous poster of whoever was doing a show at the time. He's like, Do what, what's going on? Listen to me, snap out of it. Do you want to be on a, a network with people like this? It was like some like, <laughs> <it was> hilarious. <laughs> he's like, look at it, I mean, look at it. He's so, he has such a, uh, an immediacy and a way to make things feel so human always and yeah. funny <laughs> and he's very inclusive and but it feels exactly the same it's the exact same he's so energetic and um, alive with possibilities always and I think he says yes <laughs> all the time mm. and I say no all the time <laughs> mm. do you know what I mean he's just that's who he is yeah I know we can't talk a lot about episode 9 specifically which is strange because we're doing interviews for episode 9 but um, I'm curious for you specifically in regards to Carrie Fisher and, and I, I love that they're using not using CGI they're using actual footage from 7 and 8 and I was curious if in scenes you have to do in 9 with her character how do you achieve the emotional connection there or do the scene without giving context to it if the character's going to be dropped in digitally later from real footage she shot? Uh, well, they have, uh, often they'll have a stand-in uh, person that's dressed in the wardrobe uh, for a lot of those scenes. Hmm. And so you just do what you do normally as an actor as you imagine the, the situation. But uh, it was definitely unusual knowing that uh, this was all kind of being worked around this pre-existing footage. Hmm. But, you know, the whole the movies are illusions. Yeah. And... Uh, that actually happens often, where you know you'll be shooting one <laughs> side of a scene, and the other scene's been the other side's been shot a long time ago with other actors, and you know that's part of especially making these kinds of films that yeah. um, you know all these little bits and pieces that have to go into making the clock. Then you work. see it and you go, "That's what you did." Exactly. No one told me you did that face. I know. I was it, was so it strange different. to watch yeah. it? It was. It was because there's so many bits and pieces. There's so many ele uh, elements. It's like baroque in the amount mm. of all these little bits and pieces, and so seeing, oh, that's when they had me say that one line and I didn't know what I was saying. <laughs> oh, that's, that was that point in the movie? Yeah. I didn't yeah. even know that, you know. Totally. So there's, there's yeah. you know, you kind of have to give it up a bit. You, mm. you go on and you try to be as invested and try to tell the story that you believe you're telling, mm. and you then you trust that J.J. And, and the filmmakers will 
will use it in, in the most, uh, you know, powerful way. You, you inspire me very much because uh, everything that we went through with re regards to negativity online, I, I, as somebody who was bullied in school, like it just like you just look at those things and you don't understand why people are so mm -hmm. mean and so harsh. How did that affect the way you approached Nine? Did it, and I know what your, the character Rose doesn't know that yeah. this exists, but did it affect you? At, yeah. Oh my like, God. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. What does she, as an exception, <laughs> like, no, no one just walked in here. It's like layers deep. No, but I'm curious, like, does it affect the way you then approach Nine? Like, do you, do you take any of those criticisms or do you just kind of, can you push those away and just still be the Rose you want to be? It's funny, I, I think that it really, for me, it's paying attention to the narratives that I'm playing in my head mm -hmm. and what I'm letting myself take in, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, a lot of times criticisms may come from people who have never acted in their lives right. and don't really know what like they're talking about. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah. mm. <laughs> so as an actor, for me, I think the most important thing is protecting my ability to be vulnerable and honest in mm -hmm in my acting and mm. if I'm paying attention to things like that, I think that makes it a lot harder. So. How do you block it? How do you not let it affect you? Listen, I'm still trying to figure that it's out. Hard. So you let me know yeah. when That's you a know. Process. Yeah, it's a process. It's and a I process. think it's different for everyone. Like as much as I have I have heard from everybody mm. who's, you know, sort of worked on this scale that mm. everyone's sort of dealing with that. Yeah. I <laughs> I was talking to my therapist and I was like, I, I can't wait for the moment I don't care. She was like, great, you'll be a sociopath. <laughs> you'll be, yeah, you'll wink. Yeah, yeah like, like, yeah. So she was like, let me yeah. know. It's, so it's not going to be it's possible. So not true. Yeah. It's going to affect yeah. us. Yeah. And that's something like when you make a movie this big, do yeah. you prep yourself for the world to see you to like the emotions of it and oh how gosh, the internet's yeah. going to take it or people? It, it's funny, sometimes being an actor, uh, you almost like you do it to be seen but hmm. but also to not be seen there's like a yeah. there's a balance so That's you know deep. as a cat thank you wow. <laughs> as, a, as a character you want them to see you want to share that but as a person as me Naomi I'm like oh my god like this is it sometimes feels like it's too much, but yeah. that's that's the price you pay, and it's, it's finding mm. a balance between mm. those two things. First of all, congratulations to you. Um, one thing I love about J.J. Abrams specifically is that he does a lot of practical se uh, sets. He does a lot of things in camera, very similar to how George Lucas made the films and uh, earlier in the, in the original trilogy. What was it like for you to walk on the set of Empire Strikes Back for the first time versus the walking on the set for this movie for the first time? What were, what were those experiences like for you? Well, uh, you know, the one thing I'm always, uh, you know, throughout the years I, I've been doing movies uh, since the 19, since 1958. Yeah. Um, I was, I've always been uh, amazed by the, the work that the craftspeople, yes. the people that the, what I call unsung heroes, uh, the people that nobody talks about, because we were always talking about the people in front of the camera primarily. Hmm. Uh, but when, uh, but when I see the kind of work that uh, and craftsmanship or crafts personship, like you, do we call it craftsmanship yeah. anymore? I don't know. Um, when I see that kind of, when I see what those people are, are capable of doing, yeah. uh, I'm always really fascinated. Uh, at the, cre the the creativity mm. that goes on. I mean, we're talking about people who don't talk about art. Yeah. But they're some of the greatest artists in in uh, in the world. Yeah. Do you remember walking onto the Empire Strikes Back set for the first time? You remember the first time you heard action? Do yeah. You know, what yeah, scene was I it? I saw. Yeah. The whole the, the whole idea of seeing this whole uh, um, Cloud City. Yeah. Uh, was uh, pretty fascinating. Yeah, but I also felt the same way with uh, when I did uh, uh, Batman, the first Batman, yeah. and I saw Gotham City. I said, "My God, these people are un unbelievable!" In the Rise of Skywalker trailer, we see Lando in the Falcon, and it's an epic moment for audiences to see him back in the Falcon. Can you talk about like I know context-wise, story-wise, we can't talk about spoilers, but the scene we do see in the trailer. What was it like to be back in the Millennium Falcon? Well, it was uh, it was very interesting, and it, it becomes more interesting because I'm working with uh, uh, JJ. Yeah. And uh, JJ has he's very specific about what he wants to do, so uh, the, you find yourself, you know, remembering what it was for the first time when you when you had the first experience, as opposed 
to that moment. Yeah. But but you're consumed by all of the things that the director wants you to do. Do so. That's really where hmm. what goes on in, in in a situation like that. I mean, suddenly, yes, there are all of these things that you have to play around with. Hmm. Uh, but you have to do it and make it look authentic.